<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2023 is another demonstration of our commitment to the people of our country. Our commitment signing our contract with the people, that is our five years manifesto. And Mr. Speaker, I said five years manifesto. But I could understand the impatience of the opposition wanting to see more and more because of the pace at which the PVP civic government is working. Yes. Mr. Speaker, we made some serious commitments in our 2020 campaign trail. We made commitments that we are going to ensure that the new revenue stream, especially from oil and gas, and now from our carbon credits, that will be used to benefit every single Guyanese, regardless where you live, regardless of your political affiliation, regardless of any other differences that may exist among us. So we are speaking, Mr. Speaker, about the people in Oriolo, the people in Kokwani, the people in Northwest, the people in Arnaputa, every single Guyanese will benefit from the People's Progressive Party Civic Plans, Programs, and Policies. Mr. Speaker, we promise transparency and accountability. And we are serious about transparency and accountability. Yesterday we heard from the Honorable Member mention of our EITI. Mr. Speaker, we have ensured we have ensured that we kept the same formula, government, civic society, industry. And today the MSG is as strong as ever and working with the EITI Secretariat to ensure that we prepare our third report. We cannot help it that the AFC APNU placed in that position of director one of their members. We cannot help that. We have went through that, Mr. Speaker. So not because we don't have an executive member of the AFC at EPA or EITI means that there is no transparency. Mr. Speaker, the Natural Resource One Act, we promise that we are going to revise the Natural Resource One Act to ensure that there is proper transparency and accountability with regards to oil revenue. And we have done that. We have done that over one year ago to ensure that the minister does not dictate, the minister does not dictate how much money flows into the budget from the Natural Resource Fund. The minister does not make all the decision on his own like the previous NRF by the, NAT, by the AP and UAFC. Mr. Speaker, we have revised the Natural Resource Fund Act to ensure that the minister reports to Parliament within three years all revenue flowing into the Natural Resources Fund Act, a Natural Resource Fund account. Mr. Speaker, and if the minister don't report to the National Assembly, there is a penalty of 10 years in jail. And that is accountability, Mr. Speaker. Not like the 18 million bonus, not like the 18 million bonus that was kept in secrecy for over one year. And only when we came to Parliament and we started to ask questions, we heard from the former finance minister that he thought it was a gift. He thought it was a gift and that it is in a special account, that it is in a special account in the U.S. for money to help to fight for our ter territorial integrity. Mr. Speaker, up to today, there is so much secrecy surrounding that 18 million signing bonus. And today, the very members come to Parliament and boast, and boast about the PSA that they signed. And boast about the PSA that they signed. So, Mr. Speaker, we are serious about transparency and accountability. That today, every single Guyanese, any ordinary Guyanese, can know how much money will flow from the Natural Resource Fund account into the national budget. And they will know how much will flow next year and the other year. That is transparency. That is accountability. 
Mr. Speaker, we put into that Natural Resource Fund Act that any approval, any approval of spending from the Natural Resource Fund Act must be approved by the National Assembly. And that is why we are here today. That is why we are here today to approve the money that is flowing from the Natural Resource Fund Act into the national budget. And then next week you will have a chance to question it. Next week you will have a chance to question every single project so you have proper insight as to where the money is flowing and what it will be spent on. Mr. Speaker, that is transparency and accountability that we promise to the people of this country. <clears throat> not hiding, not hiding an 80 million signing bonus. Mr. Speaker, we promise that we are going to that we are going to manage the oil and gas sector in a manner that every single Guyanese will benefit. And we are serious about that because we have been hearing over the last three days and even will only benefit, or the programs will only benefit their friends, families, and I think the world now is favorites. But Mr. Speaker, I would like to add another one to that. The PPP programs and policies will benefit the friends, the families, the favorites, and our new friends. Our new friends are your supporters who are coming over to the PPP Civic now, and who are supporting the PPP Civic now. Like people in Linden, like the people in Barbies who are supporting us now, they are our new friends and they will benefit from budget 2023 like every other Guyanese, like every other Guyanese. So Mr. Speaker, if they're saying that our friends is the 9,000 disciplined services who, will, who benefit from the salary adjustment, yes, they are our friends. Mr. Speaker, if they're saying that the 5,000 health workers who will benefit from the adjustment in salary of friends, yes, they were friends. Mr. Speaker, if they say that the public servants who benefit from an 88% increase in salary retroactive in 2022 are friends, they are our friends. And they are benefiting further from an increase in the threshold to 85%. They are our friends, Mr. Speaker. If returning the one month tax free bonus to the discipline service, make them our friends, they are our friends, Mr. Speaker. If we took off tax on fuel, one of the few countries in this world, and Mr. Speaker, I did a simple Google this morning to check the price of fuel in New York City, one of the greatest cities in the world, it is almost the same price as Guyana. Almost the same price of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, we took off all taxes on fuel so that the lovers can benefit, so that the miners can benefit, so that the farmers can benefit, so that the commuters can benefit, and those are all our friends, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, 214,000 school children will benefit from an increase in the cash grant in 2023. $40,000 including the uniform allowance. And those students and their parents are our friends. They are our friends, Mr. Speaker. Part-time jobs, Mr. Speaker, and a lot has been said about part-time jobs. And I just want to speak briefly on part-time jobs because over 10,000 Guyanese are benefiting from the part-time jobs today, and they are our friends too. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we have heard so much about the part-time jobs from the opposition. But what was your alternative in government? What did you do for the people when you were in government? Imagine we have employed over 10,000 people who are unemployed, mostly women, mostly women. What did you do for them? Nothing, nothing. But you come here and you talk about $40,000. $40,000 is better than nothing. We are doing that. And the part-time job was never meant to keep these people in part-time forever. It is a transition. It is a springboard. It is a stepping stone for them to at least get something now until they move on, until they get a gold scholarship and elevate themselves and acquire a better job, until they can find a job in the oil and gas sector after they're trained at the Port Morant Oil and Gas Institute. So they are, this is just a springboard, Mr. Speaker. It is just a springboard, yes. and to help 
and to help with the increase in cost of living. I will speak on that a little later, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me just give you a quick breakdown. Because there have been a lot said that all the part-time jobs is only the PP supporters, is only the friends and cronies are getting it. And I decided that I'm going to look at one region alone in the interest of time, my time. Thank you. And I choose Region 6 because Mr. Ramjita and the Honorable Member know that Region 6 is a predominantly PVP region. He knows that he's from there, I'm from there too. He knows that the region is also predominantly Indo Guyanese too. That is a fact. That is a fact. And I did a quick breakdown, Mr. Speaker. In Region 6, the population ratio of Afro Guyanese is 21%. The population of indo guyanese is 66% in Region 6. The part-time workers in Region 6 that are, that are currently employed, afro guyanese 1,719, representing 41%. 41%, Mr. Speaker, 41%. And mind you, the afro guyanese population in Region 6 is 21%. But in employed is 41%. And Indo Guyanese, 2,239, 54%, Mr. Speaker. 54%. And the Indo Guyanese population in Region 6 is 66%. So when you come here and you talk about racism and favoritism and cronyism, this is the facts. This is the facts, Mr. Speaker. And that is what you don't want to hear. You don't want to hear the facts. You come here and you try to distort the facts. You come here and I've listened, and most of the presenters, you came here with a hate speech, with a speech of gloom and doom. Mr. Speaker, we expected that from the opposition members. We expected that from you because, because you are still licking your wounds from being in the opposition. You are still licking your wounds that you only had five short years. The mighty AP and UFC was overthrown by the PUP civic government. That was destroyed by the over, destroyed by the over, the PUP civic government in just one term in office. In three years, we, we had a no a successful no confidence motion against you. So we expect you to come here with hate speeches. We expect that. We didn't expect you to come all lovey dovey to us. Mr. Speaker, yes. but I want to say to you that while you, while you probably hate us, the people out there love us. The people out there love us. Go, go on the president's Facebook page and you will see when he's in Linden, he has a bigger crowd than the honorable opposition leader. When he is in Albaistan, he has a bigger crowd than the opposition, the honorable opposition leader. Go and you will see it. Go and you will see it. This is the fact, Mr. Speaker. This is the fact. This is the fact. And if we are going to do a rating, you will see that he is one of the most liked presidents in the history of our country. In the history of our country. In just a short two and a half years. Two and a half years. He still gets seven and a half more to go. Mr. Speaker, as I continue, because they speak about family and friends and our new friends. Well, we have over 70,000 senior citizens as our friends who will benefit from an increase in pension. Mr. Speaker, VAT free, VAT free on mining and logging equipment, agricultural equipment and machinery, VAT of education, medical supplies, food supplies, and the honorable member that just spoke, Mr. Speaker, spoke about a light bill and the water bill. Mr. Speaker, it takes a lot, as we say in Guyana, it takes a lot of guts to come to the National Assembly and speak about the light bill and water bill. When you put vat and light and water, when you put light, vat and light and water, and when we, when we are trying, when we are trying to bring down the cost of electricity in this country, you are criticizing the gas to energy project every single day, and we'll hear that from my honorable friend. Uh, uh, Minister, if you speak to me, then I didn't put no vat on anything. And the Honorable Schumann is in that all con... So I don't know he put anything on anything too. 
My apologies, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I just wish, I wish at this point in time to respond to a few misrepresentations. And this one here, Mr. Speaker, I consider this one as an excuse for the incompetence, as an excuse for not delivering to the people of Guyana during their term in office in 2015-2020. And Mr. Speaker, I think we have heard it from about three or four members already on the opposition side. We have heard it from the Honorable Member Mr. Ramjitan, the Honorable Member Shawin Holder, and I think few other members mention it. Mr. Speaker, the new excuse to the people of this country is that they didn't have oil and gas money when they were in government. They didn't have oil and gas money when they were in government. So that is their new excuse to the people of this country. Oh, we couldn't do that because we didn't have oil and gas money. Oh, the PVP can do that now because they have new revenue coming in. Mr. Speaker, may I remind, may I remind this house that from 1992 to 2015, we didn't have no oil and gas money. We didn't have no oil and gas money, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the very member, the very member, the Honorable Ramjitan, was part of the PVP in 1992. So he knew the state of this country when we took it over, when Comrade Chetty took it over as president. He was part of the PVP. So he knew the state, and he knew what we did. He knew what we did over those 23 years with limited resources, prudent management, and prioritizing our, our developmental projects to ensure that Guyana is what it is today. To ensure that Guyana is what it is today. And I say that, I say that because after 2015, we have not seen any progress up to 2020, Mr. Speaker. And the progress that we have seen over the last two years, and the progress that we have seen over the last two years, Mr. Speaker, the oil money and start spending really yet. It is this year, it is this year budget that you will see more oil money going in to the budget. Mr. Speaker, for the record, for the record, Mr. Speaker, in 2015, $221 billion. 2016, $230 billion. 2017, $250 billion. 2018, 267 billion. 2019, 300 billion. 2020, 329 million billion. Most of which was spent by the AP and UAFC after they lost the election and refused to come out of office. Mr. Speaker, that total almost 1.5 trillion dollars. Yes. 1.5 trillion dollars the AP and UAFC spent. And what do we have? What do you have to show for it? What do you have to show for it? Where can we point us in the direction? Point us in the direction where we can go and see your achievement. Point, please. Can we go to the monument in Madia? Can we go to the Durban Park? Where can we go to see one single project? One single project that the AP and UAFC spent $1.5 trillion. But Mr. Speaker, you know, the money went, Mr. Speaker, the money went to traveling, to traveling and traveling. We say, as we say in Barbies, the Honorable No, as we say in Barbies, traveling with your Bariat, traveling with the Nami, traveling with your Bariat. Mr. Speaker, stop, they stop the cash grant and they start buying more food and refreshments, the AP and UFC, start buying more food and refreshments for themselves. Fancy vehicles, fancy offices, and still they sent home over 7,000 shuttle workers, sent home over 2,000 CSOs, sent home a number of public servants, and they're saying that today. And the capital budget in decreases every single year. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, if they're claiming that oil and gas is the only revenue now, Mr. Speaker, in 2015 to 2020, the AP and UAFC killed almost every single productive, productive sector in this country. Almost every single productive sector in this country. An honorable member, um, Mr. Speaker, I would know. The Ministry of Natural Resources manages most of the productive sectors. Where was agriculture? 
Where was agriculture under the AP and UFC? Where was agriculture under the AP and UFC? It's a racist private business. It's a racist private business. Mr. Speaker, what did they do to Bauxite? Honorable Member Sears spoke, and we talked about his beer face thing, spoke about Russell, that the government is not engaging Russell to reopen. But may I remember the honor, remind the Honorable Member, Mr. Speaker, they closed down and sure they pushed Russell, Russell out of operation. The AP and UAFC pushed Russell, Russell out of operation, putting over 500 persons in the, in the Kokwani Aichuni area out of jobs and another 100 in New Amsterdam who was working with the oil and gas transshipment point at the mouth of Bobby's River. Over 600 workers, and most of them are their supporters, Mr. Speaker. Most of them are their supporters. And then, and then today they come war because there were new friends now. Because there were new friends now. And if we can talk, I see my honorable friend, Mr. Speaker, Ricky, is smiling because he knows that I'm coming to the forestry sector. The forestry sector, Mr. Speaker, when we left in 2015, was a viable sector. It was one of the best managed sectors in 2015, bringing in revenue, export revenue to this country. When we took over in August 2020, Mr. Speaker, it was bankrupt. It was bankrupt. And Mr. Speaker, they owed utility bills. They owed salaries to serve for two months when we took over. Mr. Speaker, we are still trying to bring back the Forestry Commission to what it was before. And we have seen that this year with an increase of 13.4%, 13.4% growth rate in the forestry sector this year, Mr. Speaker. 13.4% increase in this year. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the 13.5% growth rate, it equates to over 50,000 cubic meter increase in production. 50,000 at a value of 2 billion Guyana dollars. That is what the forestry sector is doing today. And you destroyed, the AP and UFC government destroyed the forestry sector, Mr. Speaker. And if I may come to GGMC, Mr. Speaker, a quick look at GGMC. When we left, and this is in the records, I can hand it over to you, Mr. Speaker. When we left in 2015, in the accounts of GGMC, there was over $24 billion. A lot of people don't know this. There was over $24 billion. Mr. Speaker, when we took over by government in August of 2020, there was $11 billion. $11 billion. And the Honorable Member is saying we have to use $13 billion plus, plus the revenue coming in for the five years. Plus the revenue coming in for the five years. The gold board is in overdraft, was in overdraft. The gold board was in billions of overdraft. Billions of overdraft, Mr. Speaker. That is their legacy. That is their legacy, Mr. Speaker. That is their legacy, Mr. Speaker. And today they come here with the excuse, we did not oil revenue. But if you don't have oil revenue, you have to incentivize the other productive sectors. Like we are doing now, you have to grow the other productive sectors. Bauxite increased by 25%. Diamonds by 85%. Forestry by 34%. Aggregates by 12%. Sun by 100 and something percent. You have to incentivize and grow the other productive sectors. But what did you do? You did the opposite. And today you come here crying, crocodile tears, crocodile tears. Oh, we didn't have oil and gas money. We didn't have uh, carbon credits money. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, in the interest of time, I'll move on. I'll move on to another sore point that the opposition keep mentioning over, the, the, the AP and UFC keep mentioning over and over, and that is cost of living. And the way in which is mentioned in this National Assembly is as this is inflicted upon the people of Guyana by the government of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, this is a there is a global crisis. There is a global crisis. There is, apparently, the AP and UAFC is still in that balloon. The AP and UAFC is still locked in the balloon that they don't know what is happening outside of them. Mr. Speaker, we are witnessing a severe shortages of basic commodities around the world. We are happy. We should be happy, as a matter of fact, that we still have in Guyana. 
when many countries there are severe shortages. We are seeing the economic impact of COVID now, and the war did not help. The war did not help. And it is very strange that as a long, I should be a long member of this National Assembly speaking about Bora and Bygan. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, what the farmers them got? They got to get fertilizer, Mr. Speaker. What the fertilizer come from, Honorable Mr. Speaker? It come from gas. They got to use fuel to drive it to the market. The war carry up oil and gas price, we know that. The fishermen that use fuel to go out in the sea to catch the fishes. So, oh man, how can you come to the assembly and ask over by Ghana Bora for a catfish for us? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this is exact, this is the exact attitude why the people of this country has condemned the AP and UFC into the opposition. And they will stay there for a long time because apparently they hasn't been re reformed or apparently they're still stuck in the, the balloon, the cocoon. Mr. Speaker, and they criticize, they criticize the part the part-time job is a way of cushioning it. They criticize the cash grants that we give. That is a form of cushioning it. When many countries cannot do that, we are doing it in a small developing country. Cash grant the children, the pensioners, the children with disabilities, the sugar workers, the fishermen, the farmers, flood relief for household, COVID cash grant, hinterland grants. We did that to cushion the cost of living, Mr. Speaker. When many countries couldn't do it, we did it. When many countries couldn't afford to remove tax or fuel, we did it in this country. For our people, for every single Guyanese, our friends, our families, our favorites, and our new friends, and our new friends, which is all of Guyana, which is all of Guyana. And Mr. Speaker, we heard about reckless spending, reckless spending on capital projects and illegal transactions. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, let them point us to one capital project that they did in their five years after spending 1.5 trillion Guyana dollars. Let them point us to one. Durban Park, we can go to Durban Park and see the state of Durban Park. And then today they talk about reckless spending. You continue projects from us. They talk about reckless project spending on capital project. Mr. Speaker, how can you tell the people who have to commute the Demarabra Bridge every single day, spending over one hour, that spending money on a new Demarabra Bridge is reckless? Mr. Speaker, how can you say to the Northwest, the Northwest residents that bring in a new ferry is reckless? How can you say to the Region 3 people that a new highway in Region 3 is reckless? How can you say to the people on the East Bank that the new East Bank, the two new highways on the East Bank is reckless spending? How can you say to the people of this country when they travel through that airport now that that was reckless spending? Mr. Speaker, how can you say to the people of this country that building five new hospitals is reckless spending? Building a specialty hospital for children and mother is reckless spending? Oh, Mr. Speaker, how can you say to the people of Barbies Building a highway or improving the highway from New Amsterdam to Molson Creek is reckless spending. How can you say to the people in Linden that recapping and, and, and expanding the Linden Suzak Highway is reckless spending? How can you say to our people in Region 9 that building the Linden to Mugura Highway is reckless spending? How can you say to the people in Guyana that building a refinery in Guyana is reckless spending? How can you say to the people in Guyana that the NGL plan that we will bring that build that will bring down? The cost of cooking gas is reckless spending, Mr. Speaker. The only reckless thing that we have here is the opposition, the, the AP and UFC, Mr. Speaker. That is the only recklessness that we have here in this country. The AP and UFC with their reckless statements, with their reckless statements. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable, the Honorable, the Honorable MP, Ms. McDonald, spoke glowingly about education. Maybe the honorable member should spend a little more time in ensuring that you work with the system to ensure that we improve it. Because educating our young population in this country, it is not a task of the government alone. It is a task of all of us in this National Assembly. 
because all of us are leaders in this country. Just like how the education process is the parents, the teachers, and the students, we have a responsibility to the children of this country. We, all of us here. So when you come here and you hold senior position and you criticize the education system, in reality, you're criticizing yourself too. You're criticizing yourself too. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, two, two misrepresentations was mentioned by the honorable member with regards to the Minister of Education. One, the Minister of Education went to New Amsterdam and tell teachers that if they don't accept the salary, they can leave the job. Mr. Speaker, I'll hand it over to you from Kaicho News. Kaicho News offer an apology, an apology to the Minister for misquoting her, for misquoting her. And for the Mr. Speaker, I'll hand it over to you, Mr. Speaker. The deputy head of QC wrote and said that she is no longer pursuing the matter because it was misrepresented as well. And Mr. Speaker, I have those letters. I have those letters that I will lay over to you, Mr. Speaker. That I will lay over to you. Our Minister, stay on track and not misrepresenting anything. You have to get an extension to conclude. Mr. Speaker, I would love my colleague to continue speaking for a long, long time. But I do ask for an extension for him to conclude his presentation, sir. Thank you, Honorable Minister Tashira. Honorable Minister Vikram Bharat, you have five minutes to conclude your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I will now deal with the, the oil and gas sector because there have been so much said about the oil and gas sector by so many members in the National Assembly. But Mr. Speaker, let me, let me remind this House that the exploration contract signed between the government of Guyana and ExxonMobil was signed in 1999 by the then President Janet Jagan. Mr. Speaker, from then we moved to forest oil in December of 2019. Since then, we have moved our second FPSO, producing on average 380,000 barrels per day. And we are well on course, Mr. Speaker, to achieve the one million target in another four to five years from today. Already we have issued, or we have approved, the Yellowtail production license, which will see another 250,000 barrels added to our production figures. And we are presently with our international consultant reviewing the Waru project. And once, once we are satisfied, a petroleum production license will be issued, taking our production to over 850,000 barrels per day. And already there are indication that the whip tail, the whip tail development will be our fifth development coming on stream at least by 2027, 2028, which will take our production to over 1 million barrel per day, Mr. Speaker. Unprecedented. Unprecedented. Has never happened in this world anywhere. And Mr. Speaker, we are blessed as a country, all of us, because we are all Guyanese. We live in a blessed country. We have natural resources, but we have the best of the natural resources. Our crude is the best crude. Our gold is the best gold. Our bauxite is the best. And our forest is our national treasure. Our forest is our national treasure. Mr. Speaker, we are blessed that 86% of Guyana is covered in forests. We are blessed that 90% of our forests is virgin forest still standing. We are blessed that we can earn a minimum of 750 million US dollars from 30%, 30% of our carbon credits only. And that is why I say we are a blessed country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in 2023, we will continue to improve on our local content legislation. Mr. Speaker, I sat, I sat in the last parliament from 2016, and I have heard so much talk from the government of the day then about forest oil. But what was done? What framework was in place to manage the sector? The NRF that gives the minister all the power to determine how to spend the money, a local content policy presented in January of 2020, 
which is in favor of the international company and not local company. And in one year, Mr. Speaker, we move towards having a local content legislation in place. And today, today we have seen over 600 Guyanese companies, over 600 Guyanese companies registered with the local content secretary, bringing in over $700 million in 2022. Getting the oil companies to unbundle their services so that Guyanese can participate in it. Reducing the payment period from 60 days to 45 days, we would have achieved that in one year, Mr. Speaker. In one year. And we made a promise that in 2023, we are going to reassess our capacity, human capacity and our capacity in the private sector, in order to amend Schedule 1 in the local content legislation and to add services from those, to those 40 that already exist and to increase the targets that are already there in those 40. But it is based on our capacity. It is based, of course, we will hold consultations to ensure that is done. Mr. Speaker, we have heard so much about the environment and, 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 and what needs to be done. But Mr. Speaker, when the lease license was issued, the 25-page lease license was issued, one, it was never made public. Two, there was never no provision for flaring in it. There was no provision as to how you deal with wastewater in Lisa One permit. And as a matter of fact, the AP and new AFC issued a 20 years, 20 years environmental permit, which is illegal, which is illegal. And the Attorney General went to court to ensure that we correct your wrong and issue a five-year permit because you need to do reassessment and studies to ensure that you can issue a further license. Mr. Speaker, in 2020, and they speak about oil spill, and they speak about oil spill, but what was done, what was done as preventative measures to oil spill? We have a cap in stock in Yellowtail license. We have training by the CDC ongoing. We have real-time monitoring on the FPSO. We have presence of GNBS staff on the FPSO today, Mr. Speaker, and we will continue to work to ensure that we strengthen the oil and gas sector so that there is proper accountability and transparency and that the monies from the oil and gas sector will be used to ensure that every single Guyanese benefits. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in closing, I wish to thank, I wish to thank my staff from the Ministry of Natural Resources, some of them are here, who have worked overtime to ensure that we are at this juncture. And I wish to thank in particular the Minister of Finance, Senior Minister in the Office of President Responsibility for Finance, Director of Budget and the hardworking staff of the Ministry of Finance who worked tirelessly to ensure that we craft a comprehensive budget that will benefit every single Guyanese. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.